All right, in this video, we're going to look at a question that says you have to have a box, and in that box, you have to hold, right, the box will hold 40 cubes. So what are all the possible dimensions of a box that can hold this much? And out of those boxes, which one will take the least material to make? So what does this all mean? Well, if the box is holding 40 cubes, you could say that's equal to the volume. And what's fun about this problem is that we realize that um, we can make different shapes that hold this amount, and some shapes will be much more efficient than others. So let's look at that. What about the dimensions? Well, dimensions, of course, that refers to length and width and height, right, of these boxes. So really, the length times the width times the height, right, when we're combining different dimensions, we should look at lengths and widths and heights that multiply to get a volume of 40. So we know that our volume should always equal 40, right? And then we're going to kind of list out all the combinations we can find that multiply to get us a 40. And, you know, if before we get lost in this problem, we should write down all the factors of 40 to make sense of all this. So what are the factors of, of, of 40? Well, 1 times 40 is 40, right? 2 times 20 is also 40, 3 does not go into 40, 4 times, well, 4 times 10 is 40, and 5 times 8, and we're done. Now, it doesn't mean that automatically we can reject 3 as a length, right? Because we don't see 3 on this list. But, but we should test out to see first, does 3 times anything get you a factor on this list? Because if, if it did, then we could have a length or width of height of 3. This factor list doesn't tell us all the possible dimensions. It just tells us the numbers we need to get to multiply 40, right? Because here we're looking at number pairs. But 3, you know, 3 doesn't go into 1 or 2 or 4 or 5 or 8, 10, 20 or 40. It doesn't go into any of these. So I guess because of that, then we can rule 3 out. But I just don't want you to rush on a on a problem like this and ignore the possibility of other numbers as dimensions because you don't see them on the factor list. But with that being said, let, let's get started. So I like to work my way up when I'm making a list. So I'm going to start with the number 1, right? 1 is a factor of 40, and I know that 1 times 1 times 40 equals 40. And I'm going to try more combinations with 1. What about 1 times 2? Well, that's, that's 2 times 20. That's also 40. What about 1 times, well, 1 times 4 is 4, right? And 4 times 10 is also 40. 1 times 5 is 5, and 5 times 8 is 40. 1 times 10 is 10, but we've already kind of taken care of that here, because 1 times 10 times 4. 1 times 20 times 2 is 40, but we've already taken care of that, so I'm done with my 1s. All right, I've gotten all the combinations. Now I'm going to try 2. We've already done, done 2 times 20 to get 40. So what other combinations can we do? Well, what about 2 times 4? Right? Well, that's 8. And 8 times 5 is 40. What about 2 times 10? Well, 2 times 10 is 20. Doubled, again, is 40. And then if I look here, I really taking care of all of my combinations, right? There's no nothing else I can really set up here to multiply out to 40. So I'm done. But this problem asks us to find the, the box with the most surface area and the least. And there's six of these. So on the one hand, right, we look at the volumes and, and the lengths and widths and heights of these six shapes that we've set up here. We might think, oh, no, now I have to actually look at like six different boxes and calculate. But in math, of course, you want to look at extremes. So I noticed that this box right here, the first one we set up, is the most stretched out. In other words, if I do a little sketch, it's a one by, by one, right? A length of one and a width of one. But the height, this is this enormous height of 40, right? This is my rough sketch here, sorry. If we look at this, it's this long box. Essentially, it's just 40 cubes stacked on top of each other to fit in this box. This is my rough sketch, but imagine that these, these cubes are being stacked up in this box. 
And in fact, it's even going to go off this page, right? This is not 40 cubes. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So in fact, this is, this is not even half of the height. That's how stretched out this box is. So that, in one sense, that's an extreme. And in math, when you're given a bunch of stuff to look at, it's a good idea to look at something that's extreme that'll give you a picture of what's happening. And then on the other end, we have this box over here, which is the most compact. So we have something that's stretched out. This is stretched, right? And this is compact. Now, a compact box should behave differently, right? And that's where we're reasoning here. The length is 2, the width is 4, right? And the height is 5, maybe like this. So here, right, and we'll label this in a moment, but here we've got 40 cubes that fit inside, right inside this box, right here. And that look how much more compact this is. Now let's label. Well, here we have a height, right, and that height is 5. And we have a width, I believe the width is 4. And the length, right, is 2. Here the length is 1. The width is 1, and this, this height, which goes way up the page, the height is 40. So these are two extreme examples. And, and you can almost make a prediction here, but I'm not going to say it yet. Let's, let's look at the numbers and see if that might confirm what your sense will tell you about these two shapes. So let's close this one in green. This will be our green shape. And this will be our purple. So I'll write in green over here. The front face here right, is a 5 by 4. So that means the area is 20. And the front and the rear faces, right, these will be equal. So we have another 5 by 4, which is 20. Now there are six faces in this shape. What are the other four? Well, the top one here is a width of 4 and a length of 2. So it's a 4 by 2, which is 8. And so is the bottom here. That's a 4 by 2, or 8. And now we have to deal with the right and left sides. Those sides are, of course, well, this length is 2 and the height's 5, so it's 5 by 2. I'm just going to summarize. There's two of them, so I'm going to double that, and that's, that's equal to 20. So we have 20, 40, 60, plus 16, right? That's a, that's a surface area of 76, maybe square inches, and that's for this compact box down here, right? That's for this. But what about this shape over here? Well, each of these long faces that surround the box, there, there are four of them with the height of 40 and a length and width of 1, gives me four faces that have an area of 40. So that's already equal to 160. And then we add the top and the bottom, right? The top is just a 1 by 1 and so is the bottom. So that's 1 times 1 times 2. We're doubling there. That equals 2. Add up these two areas, we get 162. So maybe your sense told you that the stretched out shape will have the most surface area, right? This is 162. It's more than double the area of the compact shape. And maybe, I mean, I'll leave it to you to test some of the other ones. But here, the stretched out shape, you can imagine because the each cube is stacked on top of each other, you've got to cover it with a box that covers every face of the cube. So it's naturally looking at the most surface area. In the compact box, however, it's almost like some cubes are hidden in the middle. Right? When you pack them like this, there will be some cubes that are sitting there in the middle, right, surrounded by other cubes. So that surface area is almost hidden. So in a sense, that this compact shape, right, or when you're looking at a bunch of shapes, it's the compact one that will always have the least surface area, and the one that's the most stretched out that will use the most surface area. Of course, it's not so obvious as, as this, but this gives us a general sense of how to work through this. Thanks.